This week, the Ski Rex Media program is all for the parents, and it features a mom, a snowboarding mom with a snowboarding family. That's right, mom tips on the Ski Rex Media podcast. How's everybody doing out there in the world of snow sports and Ski Rex Media fandom and friendship? I, of course, am Tim from Ski Rex Media to bring you here to bring you another episode of the Ski Rex Media podcast. And like I said before the music kicked in, it's all about the mom tips or parent tips. We do not discriminate moms, dads. It's all good, but this week we happen to have a mom, and mom I've been getting to know over since last season and this season, and it, it, it's a fun episode. It's such a fun episode. It's it's one of our longer ones for this season. I've tried to keep them under an hour, and I have hit that target with this. It's only going to be over an hour because of my rambling here and my rambling at the end. I hope you enjoy both of those as well. Before we get into the program, however, let's talk about Whaleback Mountain. Whaleback Mountain here in the Upper Valley of Vermont and New Hampshire, right off the interstate on exit 16, I-89's exit 16, it is right off the interstate. People love to tell me how they drive down the interstate or drive up the interstate, depending on whether you're going north or south. They love to tell me how they love the view of the mountain sitting right there and how they wished they had stopped to ski at the mountain. Well, this year is the year to do it. Whaleback Mountain has everything you need in a small package. If you want natural trails, they have natural trails. You want groomed trails, they have groomed trails. You want to learn how to do it, they'll teach you how to do it. You want steeps, you want trees, whatever you want, they can get it done at Whaleback Mountain. And for those who drive by and say, gee, I kind of wish I could stop there and ski, well, this is the year for you to do it. Whaleback's tickets are not expensive. They are super cheap compared to surrounding mountains. And this year, Whaleback is a full Indy Pass partner. So if you are an Indy Pass user, you have two days waiting for you at Whaleback. There is no excuse. I've talked to some people and they're going up there this year. I've that's right. I've done my job here with these reads and with in-person interaction and have sold wet people on Whaleback Mountain and I will ski with you there. I'm always there. I'm there a lot. If you're there and you see me, don't be afraid to say hi. You'll see the high viz. You'll know it's me. You'll really enjoy it. I love Whaleback Mountain. It is my home mountain. Whaleback. Ski it to believe it. Ski Rex Media is a family program, which is one of the reasons I stopped swearing as much as I used to on the program. In person, I haven't really stopped, but on the program I have. Now, what do I mean by family program? Well, let's look at it. We have a longtime fan and friend, Scooter, and his father, rest in peace, Pops. Both have been on the program as part of the beginning or end of the season panel. Uh, Brian from Instagram, his daughter, Brooke, was on the kids program. Brian has been part of the uh, the beginning and end of the season panel. Charlie McNall, who brought to us, brought to the world the Chuck Rack. Um, if you've never seen that, I found out that his sister, whom I interviewed a week before, did not know this was was she's not anymore but was the head of ski school over at whaleback mountain didn't know it families all over the place so let's go to back to what i said about ch children and their parents charlotte joined the kids program our our snowboarder she's our snowboarder in a world of mostly skiers on the ski rex media program and now this has been the longest intro ever her mom karen karen <laughs> how you doing? i'm good how are you I am feeling goofy and silly because I am still tired from the World Cup. Um, that is when this is being recorded, which by the time it comes out, it'll be about two weeks ago. And let me tell you, if you've never been to the World Cup race at Killington, which you may not get to go unless that's renewed, the contracts are renewed. Um, what a party, man. What a party. That's what I, uh, that's what I hear. Oh, so much fun. Uh, you try and run into everybody you can. Uh, mutual acquaintance. Well, more your friend, acquaintance of mine, Stephanie, was up there. Didn't run into her, but I know she was around there somewhere. So, it's, mm -hmm. you know, 
it's a big place. There's 20,000 people walking around. What are you going to do? Uh, but we're not here to talk about that. No. We are here again for the learning experience. Ski Rex Media is a learning experience. There's things I don't know. Um, there's a lot that I don't know. And if I don't know and I've never done it, I go find someone who has. So we're going to start this, even though I know Karen, have hung out with Karen, have skied with Karen. She's going to tell us who she is and what she does. So I am, my name's Karen. Um, I'm a mom, I'm a teacher, and I've been doing travel blogging and influencing for several years now since my kids were little. Um, and now as a snowboard mom and uh, parent, with along with my husband, we have two snowboarders, uh, though my daughter took it to a new level with competitions and wanting to just not stop all season long. <laughs> and that... That's that's going to be great for this because, again, we've now uh, – a couple weeks ago, Evelyn Cantor came on, talked about senior skiing. Now we want to talk about mom. And, again, this is going to not just be moms. It's going to be parents in general, um, obviously. But who doesn't love a mom? Everybody loves their mom. And if you don't love your mom, you're broken inside. And I probably – it's not that I can't help you. I probably don't want to. That's about as hardcore as Tim from Ski Rex Media is going to get today. So let's start with basic recreational mom then, I think. Um, we'll get into the competition stuff anyway. But your mama too, all four of you, you're a family of four, yep. not including animals and pets. But <laughs> it, so this is a lot of this. Logistically, this must be a challenge in some way. It can be. So when they were little, we stayed more local to our, you know, within an hour and a half radius of our house um, and went just for fun, more with friends. Um, just the four of us would travel. We would do, you know, weekend trips, long day trips. Um, and again, it helped that we have a small mountain about 10 minutes north of us from where we've been uh, living since we had kids and where my husband and I both met. Um, which is why they're snowboarders, because we both work there as ski and <laughs> snowboard instructors. Um, and go. that would be a lot of after schools. So we, living in a semi-ski area, um, our schools come third grade, introduce them, which definitely got them more on the slopes than they were already, because they would bus them after school to the slope I would meet. And as one of the fewer parents that actually went on the slopes, I would be up on watching over the kids and after their sure. lessons, if they wanted to go out, they were still too little to necessarily ride the lifts by themselves. Um, and I would be that designated parent that was up on the slopes with them the whole time. So um, that's kind of how we managed it when they were little, nine, 10 years old, we would do longer trips with them again, um, with my husband, without, with a friend. Um, and then when Charlotte turned... 10 I think it was around 10 um she we did let we were actually visiting on the Indy Pass that was we've been a Indy Pass family since it came out um and nice. we were actually up at Greek Peak which was a new to us mountain um my son did not want to ride with me so he wanted a lesson so I'm all about lessons no matter what level you're at especially at a new mountain and you know being um being pass holders, there's some advantages to them with discounted lessons. So long story short, we threw both, I threw both of them into a quick lesson. Um, Charlotte more for free ride because I don't do park and she likes park and trees. And I do, mm -hmm. I'm not a fan, like that's the dad's job. And um, <laughs> she went out with this young rider um, instructor. And by the end of the lesson, he actually had introduced us to USASA. Um, he was a part of the central New York free ride team, which is its own team that we've now met at nationals. We, from there became Instagram friends and from Instagram, we finally met this past year out in copper, which was pretty cool after talking nice. to, you know, online friends. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, so it's just been the travel that kind of, I went off on a tangent that, um, <laughs> you know, has increased. So we'll go to small mountains. I like when they were younger, I could handle them more just me and the two kids when we go to bigger locations or further away i prefer to have someone with me um so if we have to split off if this one wants a hot chocolate break um now at 12 and 13 and their own debit cards and cell phones 
we kind of get to the mountain and I like to ski in at least pairs um, for safety concerns, whether it be another mm-hmm. adult or a friend, but um, they're not allowed to go off completely by themselves. But if they go off with their friends, they can call me, they can go for hot chocolate. I don't have to get off the slopes and meet them. It changes, you know, so from four or five years old to the school to now being tweens or teenagers uh, is my son, I guess he's considered mm-hmm. um, the dynamics of when, where we go and how we break up during the day and where we, you know, has changed for us. I think I answered. <laughs> <laughs> you did. I love a good logistics answer. I also loved a couple of things you said in there. Um, first and foremost, I remember when I was 13. Now, I had just learned to ski when I was 12 at our local uh, uh, T-Bar only hill down there in Brattleboro, Vermont. Cell phones, though invented, were not something everybody had. And I don't think the debit card was invented yet. No. So, <laughs> what an amazing what an amazing world we live in where technology has brought kids to this level. And yes. we'll get into technology too, but you talk about them not splitting off and Indie Pass. And I'm going to bring all this together with something that John Hunt, executive director over at Whaleback Mountain, uh, he and I have talked about this several times, the advantages of the smaller places. You talked about Indie Pass, you talked about Greek Peak um, on the Indie Pass still is. Uh, yep. Whale back full partner this year. So you got two days. So please come visit if you have time. Yeah. Um, and that's got to be we, we talked about John and I. That's what I was going to say is like, how beautiful is it to have the smaller places where all the trails come down to one place? You, you know, it's not like going to Sunday River. It's not like going to Killington where you're like, meet me at K1. And then the kids end up down at Ram's Head. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's got to be a wonderful thing. You know, as you're talking about not wanting them to get too far away on their own. But if they did. The smaller place is probably beautiful like that. Yes. There's one lodge. There's one ending. All roads lead to the parking lot. (laughs) So everyone knows Mm -hmm. where, you know, where to end up. And, you know, and that's thing. And like one of the big things we do do is like when we show up at one mountain for the first time and we have a goal each season, we try to add at least three to five new mountains to us um, per season. I mean, I've been to even more but just Charlotte alone has been at Charlotte and Jack, but Charlotte Moore has been to 43 mountains now by wow. age 11. As of last year, age 11, um, she was been to 43 mountains. So our first thing when we do get to a mountain is, well, usually a bathroom break because we've been in the car and yep. then we get, you know, Travel we sport. all go on, we all get on um, the lift together. That's my one rule. The first lift of the day, we're all together. I do my mom selfie. For Instagram of the three of us or four of us on the lift, we take the first run down together to kind of scope out what the train looks like if we're new to it. And even if we're not, the weather changes from last time and getting down to the lift. And then if they want to ride the lift, just the two of them or sometimes my son will go with my husband and I'll ride with Charlotte and, you know, we break it up. But the first run of the day is always together. The first lift of the day is always together and we kind of know where the bathrooms, where to meet. In case anyone, you know, we do separate or if we do separate by accident, we know how, you know, to get. And to your technology, one of our biggest things, and it's kind of like a family competition and even friends competition is we all have the slopes app and, sure. you know, not sponsored by them, would love to be sponsored, but um, I we, hear all you, slope, man. we all have the slopes app. So another cool thing is, you know, there are mountains, um, for example, one of our home bases this winter is going to be Bel Air. Cell phone service is spotty at best when you're at that okay. mountain. But with slopes, I can tell you exactly what lift they're on or what run they're on and about where they're at at all times because it still picks up that. So I can tell you, like when I am away from them, whether it be by myself or someone, yep. I can tell you where my kids are. And I know like if they're on the lift or even if they're in the lodge, we'll, you know, put the little pinpoint of where they're at. So another technology help, but on that, we're like, you know, I can tell if they're going too fast at the end of the day and then they get a little lecture, um, <laughs> you know, how many runs went on and all that kind of stuff. Dude, the, the slopes app is like the easy pass camera ticket. If you go yes. too quick between exits, you will get the ticket in the mail and now yeah. mom can bust you. Awesome mm-hmm. that you brought up slopes because that was going to be my most uh, when we when I was talking about technology it was going to be the more specific question. Um, I am going back to slopes myself. Uh, I did an interview last year with Charlie Walker, 
who brought around the Communiski app, and I don't know what happened to it, but it's not what it should have been. Uh, yep. No, no, no animosity, nothing mean. It just didn't. It just didn't work well, and it, I'm sure it still doesn't. Um, but it, the Slopes app does do the tracking, and I, that's what I was going to ask: is like, do you track them? Do you keep that technological eye on that eye in the sky? And that's oh, yeah. a wonderful thing. We didn't have that, and even worse, like when I was a little kid, I didn't. I was the I'm the first generation. I'm the yep. first generation snow sports. Uh, well, no, I'm part of the first generation. My cousins do it as well, but we're first generation our age group. The the ones who were born in the late seventies. Uh, so we didn't have that. So parents at best were like soccer parents on the sidelines um which you see a lot in uh in, in the uh, learning area by the by the yeah. carpet lift were you ever one of those moms because that's that's a lot of fun one time i was working i saw the moms they were helping catching kids who couldn't stop it was amazing so much fun i feel no so i feel like we put in <laughs> we put in our dues teaching other people's kids when we were teenagers and in our young uh-huh. 20s so now that we have our own kids Um, and even as, like I said, a previous instructor and I'm a teacher for real life job, you know, like my main gig, um, you can't teach your own kids. It's really like, they don't want to listen. They, uh, you know, I can get kids on lifts that never been on lifts before, which I've done after they've, you know, gone 20 times with their own parents and they'll listen to me, but apparently, you know, I'm not cool to my own kids. So I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I don't do park. So, you know, I'm told, um, you know, now more than when they were little, but it's just, they don't want to listen to you. So for the sideline parenting, we did, you know, when we went to the smaller mountains to save a couple bucks, like my husband, I did, like we would take turns with both kids. One would go up the carpet. One of us would catch the kids, send the other kid up the carpet and do that. And as my husband says, it was five miserable trips going (laughs) with our kids for the first five times. We had leashes, we did it all, and they were still good, but it was, I'm cold, I'm this, I'm this, because they knew how to wear you down. Where sure. if it's someone else with your kid, or you're with someone else's kid, they're not going to pull all those tricks on you or excuses, because they don't, they can't. So mm-hmm. um, now, once we did those, we literally just were, were firm believers in lessons. Um, they yeah. work, you know, they put money in other people's pocket, I, you know, give back. Please tip your ski instructors. Another big thing on um, technology, Venmo makes it super easy. <laughs> and, totally, man. You know, and I'll be even with Venmo, like when we went, it's funny, when we went to Greek Peak the second time, um, mm-hmm. I forgot the name of my son's instructor who he loved. And we wanted to try to get the same person. Thanks to Venmo, I was able to go back and see when I sent money while I was at Greek Peak and get the guy's name off my Venmo and get the same instructor again. Because oh, that's awesome. I had it because I had his name <laughs> due to Venmo and tipping him. Um, Dude, that's great. So, you know, but yeah, we put our kids in lessons and they lasted longer out on the slopes than with us. Um, they liked it better and truthfully gave my husband and I time to go on trails that they weren't able to go now. Now they out ski us. Sure. But <laughs> we weren't, you know, back then they weren't going down the black diamonds and they weren't going in here and they weren't so it gave us a date day so to say yeah. like where we knew where our kids were but we're paying for a babysitter but they're learning while they're being watched absolutely and that's a that's a great tip and i'm <laughs> glad you brought it up because i bring it up all the time people say do you teach i'm like no i will never <laughs> teach again um i i i i tried to i've taught friends before successfully uh last time i did it a buddy of mine brought his wife on the ski trip and i thought we were going to witness a divorce that day oh yeah um but get the friggin less yes. please for everybody and the thing is too and like i know they're not cheap uh, it, mm-hmm. it definitely at the bigger mountains there's they're not cheap but you can get sure. lessons if you you know if you do live near an area a lot of the recreation departments partner up um if you go on the website there'll be like cheap tuesdays cheap wednesdays at various mountains there's ways to get it but the other thing is i will say with little kids three, four, five years old, especially do a private lesson, do put your money into one or two private lessons over a six week course of learning because they will get more out of that one private lesson than they will out of six weeks. 
So, totally. and then once they have their foundation and they're moving and they're doing banana monkey and they're doing pizza and French fry, then you can throw them in a group lesson because they know how to stand and they can go up and down, even if it's a magic carpet. But when it's day one, that two hour lesson that you just paid for with 10 other kids, the, they're literally, the one stands up, one falls, it's a domino effect. They're not getting, you know, I'm not, if that's all you can afford, do it. Sure. But if you can, if it's one investment, if you have to pick each season or once a month to do one thing on the slopes, those private lessons definitely come out and are worth worth it in gold. Absolutely. It's it's an investment. It's an investment it's in the future. It's, yeah, it's it's definitely an investment. And it's a family investment because you'll put the money up front. But then once they know what they're doing, eight, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years old, they're going down all those trails with you because they have the foundations and they have it. Totally. And you could see that um, more. I see all the time up there uh, a dad with his six, seven year old daughter and they're running bump runs. They're yeah. hitting tree trails. They're doing all this stuff. They are ready to go. And it's wonderful. And again, if you can get them like it's awesome that you got yours started so young. It's such a better way to do it. Like even at 12, I thought I was a little old. Not that I was a you know fearful, but you know, the little ones, they, they, they get a low center of gravity, all the science behind it. Oh, it's yeah. wonderful. All the physics. You're it's definitely wonderful. more you fearful. You're definitely more fearful. I mean, I didn't like you were saying, I started skiing at eight because that's when hmm. it was introduced at the school where I grew up, same mountain that sure. the kids learned at. And sure. um, my father was actually a skier. My mom is not a skier. Um, hmm. So I grew up with my dad and my two siblings that were younger going on ski trips. We still went. We went to Killington once a year. We did long weekends. We did things even with a mom that didn't ski. She liked to sit in the lodge, drink her coffee and read books. And then she'd bring a friend. Hmm. Sometimes she would leave us, go shopping. But we still do like, you know, did it. But it's a definitely a different thing when all of you are up on the mountain um yeah and you know you're all together but yeah like we started young but i didn't start snowboarding though till i was in eighth grade like charlotte and jack's age now is when i started mm. and broke my wrist the first like second run up and there you go you know That's put on the gas <laughs> hit it under the jacket and kept going you know the next nice. and didn't give up but you do you know we know how to fall, but at the same time, then we know how to fall. We almost get hurt more because we think mm. we know how to fall. When you're little, like you said, you're a rubber band. You literally bounce. And mm -hmm. so the kids don't have fear because they don't get that, you know, the repercussions. Like one of my famous things I say to Charlotte, she like, I'm a broken record with her. But when she's like, well, you don't do the jumps and you don't do the cool stuff like dad or and like that kind of stuff. And I'm like, <laughs> well, because I got to drive home. And if it's just me and you and I break a leg. How are we getting home? You know, I'm yeah. like, I'm the, I'm the parent, I'm the camera one. And then she makes fun of my camera skills, but, um, <laughs> you know, like I can't win with this little one. She keeps me on my toes and keeps me laughing. But, um, you know, there is a, there's definitely a fear. I mean, I definitely, I don't go as fast. Um, I feel like I'm usually like pulling, you know, on the caboose just to also make mm -hmm. sure that everyone is in front of me. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm that like, I've definitely toned down my craziness. Um, sure. I wish I could say my husband did, but he still is crazy. Um, <laughs> you know, and so him and Charlotte will go off a lot. And then my son and I like the long, just fun runs and, sure. you know, different styles now. Yes. And, you know, it, it sounds, you know, I hope it doesn't sound to anybody like it's more work than it should be. Now I've skied watching Karen watch Charlotte. I've done this a couple times now, King Pine yep. and Gunstock, that trip, um, and it's you wouldn't know it by looking at it that there's this much thought that goes into it because when they ski, they're just skiing as if we're a snowboard when they ride. It, it's just a it's now habit habitual because yes. you and I would assume it's because you do this all the time. You know, you wouldn't it, it they she everything she just said. You don't see it. It doesn't look like it's given a second thought. It just happens. So yep. I hope no one thinks this is like, oh, my God, I'm going to take my kid. And now I'm going to have to do all this, that and the other. I'm not going to be able to handle it. No, it becomes a thing. Go ahead. It's all about organization, I feel, too. Like even sure. like we our house has our snowboards in one location. All our jackets are in another. And then we have like a closet where literally everyone has to draw their socks, 
the socks, the gloves, the goggles, the unders, and the um, neck gaiters and hats. Everyone has their own draw. So even from when they were little, they had their own book bags. So if we were going on a trip the night before, I had little laminated things, and they would it would say two pairs of socks, two pairs of this, whatever we needed. They would put it in their own bags because they went through the list. They were six and seven at this point. Pack their own bags. Sure. Strap their book bag. Stra- um, you know, get to the mountain. We would get dressed. Usually, a lot of the times, if it was a quick day trip, we would get dressed at home. Just have our helmets mm-hmm. and like the gloves in the bag. If we were going somewhere, we would get dressed at the mountain. Um, after COVID, we're awesome getting in the car. You know, we can get ready in the car in minutes. But totally. um, they <laughs> took the biggest thing once they could, you know, do things on their own is giving them that responsibility, which took it sure. off me. So I just had nice. to make sure there was gas in the car and I had the snacks. But as far as them getting their stuff, they had it when we would, I have, one of my favorite pictures of them is walking, I think it was butternut, but they're both walking into the lodge. They have their book bags with their snowboard strapped onto it. So they carried yep. all their own stuff. I was not a mom that carried anything. Um, still not a mom <laughs> that carries anything. Totally. Um, I gave them that responsibility and they went with it. And even now, like they know we still have the kind of the same checkoff list, but for the most part, they know what they need um, when they're going out and they all have. I don't like gators. I do like gators. I don't want this hat. I want this, you know, like they have their own. So sure. they pack themselves. Um, sometimes I'll check if we're going on a longer trip, I'll definitely check. But I'm also, there's always a Walmart target or a slope store that if I mm-hmm. need to buy it, there's a, something at the mountain. I can find everything I need. So oh, yeah. I'm all like, I don't stress also with that. I mean, boots, I don't want to have to be buying boots, but like the little <laughs> things I can always I get. Know. Um, no, that's, that's not fun, but, um, no. you know, so it sounds like a lot, but once you start it and your kids are in it, everyone gets into a groove. And then once sure. you find your groove, you're, it's now just, you know, it just works, you know, for everyone, you know, I will make sure the boards are strapped in and locked because that's yeah. my OCD and my, you know, going hey. over things. But other than that, like they get it, you know, I do collect the passes so we don't lose them. You know, when we're done Mm -hmm. for the day, I have a little binder that has all our passes in it. Um, And then when we get to the mountain, I hand them all out, put them in their jackets. But, um, you know, those are those things um, that I do. But for the most part, they are, you know, they turn on their slopes app, they make sure their phone's going and they're, you know, we're off. There you go, man. Organization. That's like the yeah. greatest tip I've ever heard because, you know, when people ask me, I the best I can give you is, and you actually, you know, you can tell me if you agree with this or not, you know, people are like, what, what about kids? I was like, don't buy stuff. They grow too fast. <clears throat> you know, let them, let them grow before you buy, you know, get them to rent. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm a big pro renter anyway for people, you know, people who like live in New York City where their apartments is big, you know, is two inches by two inches, you know, rent the stuff. Don't don't mess around. Um, but the same thing was good. That's the best I could do because I don't have any and I don't ride with any. Yeah. Um, Charlotte was the first kid I rode with in years, years yeah. and years. And she doesn't you know, ride so. like a kid. And that's the thing. <laughs> no, she rides like a goofball. Yeah, <laughs> which is hysterical. Like she's she funny still as hell too. <laughs> yeah, like it, I mean, it's fun as hell. Like she's great. She's she's hysterical. Uh, I've had fun with her. Like I was the friend who rode the lift up with her one day at Gunstock, yeah. um, and we had just met the day before. So I felt good about that. I was like, wow, this woman trusts me to be here talking to her kid about school. Um, yeah. This is great, uh, fantastic. I felt I felt good. You know, oh, she I like, lo- like that's the thing. If we would laugh, like, you know, some people when you get on, you know, as a skier or snowboarder, like sometimes mm-hmm. you, you go down the mountain, you get on the lift and like, I just need a breath. Like, I'm just, you know, thinking to yourself, yeah. you're quiet. If you get on, if you got on the lift with my kid and you mm-hmm. have, but when she was little, she literally got off the ski lift with your social security number, your birthday, your address, your pet's <laughs> first name. Like she had all your security questions answered because she never stopped talking. <laughs> You know, she'd be like, my name is Charlotte and I'm three and I like to ride this trail. Now, what do you do? And blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, dude, the poor person just wants to like taking a five minute breather on the slope up before he rides back down. And she could not leave you alone. Like she, you know, and that's the thing. I love it. They're very personable. And I Mm. do have very outgoing, you know, children. 
who, you know, I'm that person on the lift half the time where I'm like, all right, catching my breath, you know, not even looking at the phone or scrolling through anything, just Mm -hmm. like, I'm going to close my eyes for like two minutes and just get to the top. And then we're, you know, we're going again because I can't, you know, I go slower, but I still can't Mm -hmm. go slow chasing Mm -hmm. these two kids down. Um, and she's still like, well, blah, blah, blah. Did you see that? Well, now I'm going to go in the trees and blah, blah, blah. (laughs) You know, there is no, I don't, uh, the energy, you know, of tweens and teens and little ones. Like I don't have it anymore. (laughs) And I, I all my friends ask where my energy comes from because I'm definitely, uh, we're a mover. Like we're, you know, Mm -hmm. for example, this will come out afterwards, but like we have a parent teacher conference day Thursday, so there's no school. So I'm taking my two and two other kids up to Hunter for the day nice. because there's not, you know, cool. there's not a lot open right now in New York, but Mm-mm. we have the Epic passes. So everyone doesn't have to pay. So why not? So we're, yeah. you know, yeah. I'm like eight 30 all the kids need to be at my house, ready and loaded, driving up, going to do, you know, half a day, full day and drive back down. But they're like, awesome. the moms are like, take them, take them. I'm like, take you know, but I, I, that's the one thing like, so kind of getting back to your sideline, we've done mm-hmm. other sports like the kids have tried other sports um you know my charlotte race bmx for years is kind of phasing mm-hmm. out of it but i was standing on the sides it's fun it's cool i like that but i'm more of action myself so even when she competes and she's training and she's just waiting for her next run i'm able sure. to go up with other moms and dads and or my son or other people and just do a couple laps while she's waiting, watch her race, ride back up with her, go over it, come back down, you know? So it's still like, I'm not really, I find like a sideline mom. I like mm-hmm. being, snowboarding is me too. Like yeah, we identify all as snowboarders. Absolutely. And that's one of the beautiful things about having you on here is that it's a family thing that you and the kids and your husband, you all do it. And it's such a great family activity call it a sport if you want some people say it's not a sport some people say it is i don't even know what the definition of sport is I'm not gonna lie and <laughs> I, I i just it's such a great family activity to do and like you said with the new technologies if you you know you can keep track of them you have a little organization little routine a couple passes in your back pocket you're good to go but yes as we go from recreational how does that all translate from recreational to maybe to like, well, Charlotte, she rides competitively, you know, how does that now translate? Because now you're dragging everybody to, you know, to the mountains for fun. Now you're dragging it for not work, but for work in air quotes. Um, more money. (laughs) Okay. Fair enough. Fair Um, enough. You know, it's, it's, it changes it because so some of it is our weekends are more orchestrated by which mountains the competition's at versus, okay. hey, we haven't done Catamount yet. Let's run up to Catamount. Hey, we haven't done Mount Snow yet this you know season. Let's head to Mount Snow. So we're more restricted on where we can go most weekends, um, hmm. depending on where the uh, where the comps are. So that's one um, you know one thing that the competitions have changed. Um, we still get to ride as a family, um, not probably more the three of us. And while Charlotte, you know, with her coaches or doing practice runs or warm ups, Um, so the laps with her, some of those days is less, but, um, Mm -hmm. you know, that's really the change. So the locations, um, were more tied down to versus the freedom sure. of we always went every weekend, but we would go to different places. Like two seasons ago, we hit 26 mountains, like different mountains that season. Wow. Um, you That's know, in, amazing in, to me. Yeah. In like 48 days or 49 days we had, you know, done. Um, and then this season, I think we only were able to hit like 19 or 20. So, mm. you know, we didn't hit as many mountains. Still. We still hit a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's um, still pretty good. But, you know, we, so it's, it's more of that. Um, and then like, again, like some, some of the vacations, like we have always done a huge New Hampshire trip. We love the New Hampshire mountains. We started three years ago. Um, and this year, this past season, we have the, um, because of competitions, instead of leaving Friday and coming home Sunday, we had a rush home Friday, mm. not rush home, but rush to the mountain and get a hotel there. And do sure. 
a day of training and two um, comp days. And then dro- and then they drove home and I went to a 10th. I continued one more day of a 10 day ski trip. But, um, you, go. <laughs> you know, and threw in something else and was crazy. But um, so that's one thing like that's kind of changed. But we still make, you know, we'll still try to fit in something else. You know, or even myself, like she, the day that we had headed back for, um, it was actually Bel Air from New Hampshire. So I'm going from New Mm -hmm. Hampshire all across Massachusetts into New York and then down back down to the Catskills. Um, we, I dropped her and I went to Platykill and met with a bunch of friends. So I dropped her at one mountain and left and went to the other and then picked her up at the end of the day. So, you know, (laughs) I, I, we've done that too. It's a lot of driving. That's not only a lot of driving. That's a lot to keep straight. Like, I need to be here. I need to be there. I go there. I, I, I have a real question, but I'm going to do a goofy question first. Did, yeah. Have you ever misplaced her? No. All that? I always say, I, I've, I jokingly say, I've tried to lose them, and they mm-hmm. always come back. Cat came <laughs> they back. Did ha- they did have bracelets when they were very little. And we mm. would travel to like amusement parks and say, if lost, call mom and dad with our phone numbers on them. That I awesome. had like those Love it. Like, con- like yeah. concert bracelets that I bought that yeah. were just like an extra safety because they didn't have phones, but they That's knew like, idea. you know, they knew our name, they knew our, knew our address. Um, and then the phone numbers were like on their wrists. And it was, we did lose, who was it? Jack at <laughs> Sesame Place when he was four. We turned around from taking a picture with, I think, Oscar. And all of a sudden he was gone and there was three moms (laughs) and three kids and we still couldn't find them. And I mean, what seemed like it was, you know, forever he was gone. It was probably five minutes, but Mm -hmm. I wound up going in a lost child building. They actually have it. And the guy and Jack was in the middle of singing his song about my, you know, my name, my first name, last name, his birthday. And then he said, Mm -hmm. and my mom's number is this. And the guy was about to call me when I walked in. And they okay. were like, he is the most prepared lost four-year-old we've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> and there you go. Little organization, little yep. preparedness, and it's yep. fine. And as a parent, you know, parents aren't perfect. They're not supposed to be perfect. Things happen. It's okay. Shout out to Sesame Place. I've only yep. ever been in a restaurant outside it, never been in it, but <laughs> it is what it is. What are you going to do? Yep. So when it, that, now that question was kind of goofy, but she did come up, you know, with something kind of real. Now, from a logistics point of view, as I was saying, you know, and being competitive, I, I've known travel team soccer moms. One of my mm-hmm. best friends, her son was on three teams at once. So yep. she was forever and her back of her, her car was full of soccer balls and everything, but never left the state of New Jersey. Now, skiing and snowboarding competitively, that's going to, I mean, if you're, if you just st- stop at regionals, that's fine. You're in New England. You're in New York. You know, you're in, you know, I love the Catskills. Uh, yeah. A good deal of my family's from the Catskills. But you all had to go to Colorado last season, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. So now this adds a whole new element because we're doing the competitive thing. Um, and that's awesome. And you push her and that you're great parents for allowing her to be an athlete. Athletics is very important, I believe. Um, but now it's, doing everything you just said, but now you're throwing out air, an aircraft and airports, which suck anyway. Like yeah. how much, like how much, I don't want to say how much worse does it make it, but I think, you know what I'm trying to get at what you're adding all this in. What is that? It's more money again, <laughs> you know, Sure, but um, realistically it's not much different than how I pack to go to Vermont for like a week. So sure. it's the bag. Everyone has their own ski bag. Everything goes in that. Um, everyone mm-hmm. has a book bag that has the rest of their stuff. And we actually bring one suitcase for the four of us. So okay. we we have like uh, when I travel in, in cars, we have a giant bin that we okay. I literally bring like a giant rubber made bin. And that's where all our ski stuff is. And then everyone mm-hmm. has a book ba- bag with our clothes. What we've realized after with ski travel, and I'm sure most people will agree, is you're not wearing after like everyone having their own suitcase when they were younger and we were, you know, less experienced and thinking we were going to do way more than we actually did. You Mm -hmm. live in your ski outfit. So we upgraded our unders, our base layers, because we would finish the mountain, 
be in our base layers, go get dinner. And by the time we got home, we're showering and repacking everything for the next day, whether we're in Colorado or Vermont, and we didn't need all the clothing. So we really realized how to minimize. And as long as there's a washer and dryer, we're very, we pack, we're minimalist. So um, that's the biggest thing. So if we're going for a week, I make sure we have four of everything. And then everything okay. just keeps getting washed. So the travel Perfect. itself is everyone has a ski bag. We have, you know, we've even, two times now we've brought bathing suits to Colorado. We have not put them on. Um, eventually, <laughs> maybe we'll find a hot tub or a pool. But we have nah. not, <laughs> we, have not been, we have not been able to do that. Um, so it's like this year, we'll probably still bring one. But again, I'm like, when we get out there, I'd rather just buy things. So like, we'll just wait and there's a target right where I like to stay. And we go and get our shampoo conditioner and all that. So I'm not traveling with it. And, okay. you know, we kind of, you know, go through it. And then we'll, you know, we actually last year, when we left Colorado, we had so much extra food. We rented Airbnb and we went to the neighbors and we were like, here's all this. Do you want any of this? And we gave all our extra milk and even beer to the to the homeowners Jeez. next door. So we're really good people to stay because we do, you know, we Heck share. Yeah. And that's and even with travel, one of the biggest things is we'll go with other people. So last year we went to Colorado. We brought our friends from home. It was our spring break. So their two kids came and we all split a house. This year we've already booked it. Um, you know, hopefully knock on wood, she makes nationals. Even if she doesn't, we just love it. So we're okay. still going to go out there and we'll swap out mountains, you know, instead of three days at Copper and visiting some of the Vale, um, Epic Pass mountains, we'll do more icon and, you know, throw in some other things. Um, so yeah, for like traveling and like the cost effectiveness, um, we've, we've, I feel like really figured it out. Um, you know, okay. it's taken some trial and error, but my kids have been traveling since they were, I guess Jack was six weeks old on his first road trip, you know, down to, uh, Maryland or Jersey or one of the beach trips at that point. So like, sure. they love being in cars. They've been to almost every state on the East coast, but Maine at this point, um, since they were little and not ski related. So they've also, they just get it and they just know, and they're really flexible and go with the flow. Um, whether it be plane or, you know, car, we've flown, we've driven to Disney. And then the past three times we flew to Disney. Um, they much prefer flying now. They love planes. <laughs> um, but yeah, That's so odd, it's just more power yeah, to them. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's them. And one of the things I, you know, also with families and the amount of travel, we don't as if, we really don't go away in the summer. Mm -hmm. Um, we mm. do one trip like with my in-laws um, and then like kids go away with my parents usually for a few nights, like up to a week. Okay. But we, as the four of us in my house, don't really travel in the summer. We save all our vacation time from work and money and winter is our thing. So that's what we all like to do. So that's the other thing. It's we don't go on all these big fancy trips all summer. When the kids are home from school, we normally do more staycations during the summer and just stay at the mm -hmm. pool and go to a water park a lot. And hang out versus, you know, the winter where that's where most of our travel, you know, budget goes. Yeah. Awesome. See, and that's a great point. You know, if anybody was about to ask as you're listening, like, God, <laughs> how the hell does she do all this? Well, they take that break there, you know, during the, you know, what could be called the off season, you know, <laughs> they, they yeah. take that break and that's what you need. Reset, refuel, re refund if you will, um, or fund again, I should say. Now that's a lot. And again, it seems to me, and it, it seems so obvious, but now that you said it, preparedness, routine, uh, uh, organization, training from a young age, you know, get them in there, get them learned, learning how to do this makes it easier as a parent. Now, we've done your recreational and your, your competitive. Now I met you guys on a media trip. So now you're a travel blogger. You're trying to do that as well. Now you have that to factor in, but it seems like for me to ask, that's kind of silly. Cause it seems like it's just more of the same. It's just taking the same technique, the same tips, yep. the same tricks and saying, all right, instead of this though, our destination is this. And here's why. Yes. I mean, that's really it. You know, the only other thing with like the media travel is it's 
usually during the school or work week. So Mm. for that, it's just more or less shifting um, work a little bit and work and shifting school a little bit. Um, You know, they're still younger. So missing a day here and there isn't as critical. You know, it sure. is, it's middle school. I'm not downplaying education. Don't, <laughs> don't, I don't want to get any, um, you know, people up on that, but it's, they'll bring their computers, they'll work, they'll, you know, like, thankfully one of the good things of COVID um, experiences is everything is on Google classroom for a sure. lot of kids now. So they can bring while they're not in school doing that experience. And it is an absence. Do not, you know, get me wrong. They're mm-hmm. not falling behind because they can sure. literally go on the computer, do the classwork from the day and do the homework and really not miss school in that sense, other than physically not being there. And mm. then usually one of my rules is they have to stay after school when they do come back if they have questions and just play catch up, you know, sure. so and they're and they're good students, um, mm-hmm. you know, they're good kids and they're good students. So it hasn't affected them. I don't know how I would be if it did, you know, I wouldn't probably pull them out as much or, you know, do that. It's definitely decreased the time that they're, they do miss school. Um, Hmm. when they were in peak, like when they were in elementary school, I think one season, it was 19 days, um, that we were, we missed school for, I would say, 14 of it was for skiing for like for snowboarding, Um, you know, and it's, but it was elementary school, which again, I'm not downplaying, but it's less critical. It's not regents. It's not like, you know, high school. So that's all coming into play (laughs) with that said is we've, we have started looking um, into schools, you know, for Charlotte to take it to another level. It's Mm -hmm. again, a different financial level also, but it does reduce um it will reduce some of the travel because i will not have to i will be there but if i can't make it she will still mm-hmm. have a ride and do the competition and be there and have support and have a coach and have a team um mm-hmm. but i don't have to physically do all the travel myself so um, sure so we have looked into that um and she is going to test it out this year um, come mm-hmm. February, she'll go to uh, Killington Mountain School for their boost program. They have a seventh and eighth grade program. Um, it's only a month, um, but they go to school there and they train and they kind of get everything all in one place. Um, and that's one of the things like we've been looking into and discussing um, to take it to a different level and also sure. having more resources than some of the other local mountains to us. You have to travel. Um, Mm -hmm. and we're in, you know, we're in New York, we're only an hour North of New York city. We're in a great location as far as all the highways are right here. So I can go East, South, Northwest. Um, Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. But, um, you know, bringing her to that level and even that level, like I will say, and I mean, we've had this conversation off, you know, talking like we're being recorded, but we're also very, we're also very just realistic. So Mm -hmm. Charlotte loves it. We love it. We love supporting her. We love watching her. Um, you know, and people are always like, oh, she'll make it to the Olympics and X Games. You know, and I was like, well, X Games is cooler. It's annual too. But mm-hmm. realistically, like she just really like the more and more you talk to, like I've talked to her and other people have asked her, she just wants to work in the industry. So it's mm-hmm. not only just her riding, which she never wants to give up. And yeah, it would be awesome to see my kid on the TV, you know, one day, but realistically, and that's, what we keep to, and what we, you know, instill in her is it's your people skills. It's who you meet while you're out there. Um, you don't know who you're going to ride a lift with truthfully. Sure. So it's Absolutely. just always being on your best behavior and being your best self. Um, mm-hmm. and it will go far, you know, and that's one of the things like even with snow sports in general, you don't have to be competitive and you can work at a mountain. You can start, you could be an instructor, you could work lifts, you could then work in the office, you could move up, you could do social media, you could do marketing for them. Then not Mm -hmm. only the ski mountains, there's brands. So she's really been exploring and why, um, you know, I do take her on some of the more media trips and the different things that I get to, um, am invited to and participate in. 
because she's seeing how it's working on the back end sure. instead of just showing up as a general mission, a, a guest, and she's meeting people. And, um, you know, even the feedback from that, they're like, wow, she can hold a conversation at 12. You know, she shakes mm -hmm. my hand and introduces herself. You know, she's, it's more of the well-roundedness. Um, I'd still support, like, I still would support, you know, I support both of them. And sure. um, I support the sport and all that. But it is a sport that even if you don't compete when you're 20 and you stop competing or you kind of fall out of, you know, love with that, it's a vacation. And then it goes back sure. to our travel and our family time. Mm -hmm. So it's something that it's a lifelong skill that you will always do. You know, yeah. I, I I feel like it's like golf and snowboarding are those like family. <clears throat> everyone kind of does it. Um, and you can always like jump on a trip with someone or just go out for the day or do a family vacation and bring friends like we, you know, do a lot of um, where basketball there's always one person sitting out you know like yep. everyone's mm -hmm. on at the same time and that's why it's another like sport and activity that we all really love because we all can do it together no one's Absolutely. sitting and watching you know all the time like yes we're, we do watch charlotte but we're all still strapped into our snowboard boots and our boards while we're watching her so we can go down the rest of the trail with her and stuff totally. so no one's sitting on the sidelines just watching her for the day and doing nothing else and that's a beautiful thing. Like, like we said earlier, it's a family thing. And for you all, it's a very tightly knit family thing, which is a beautiful thing in the 21st century. Like, um, and it, snow sports could be so much to anybody. And you're right. Yeah. You know, she's going to be at Killington Mountain School, um, which is a ski academy, a snowboard academy, snow sports academy, I guess you should say. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, over at Killington, obviously, um, uh, it's, it, Killington's a lot of fun. And she can yep. learn a lot, but there is a lot. Um, in fact, I've always said, especially for teenagers and people in their 20s, not just the snow industry necessarily, but hospitality as a general yep. is, is a job that everyone should do just because of the, well, all right, I'm not going to lie. There's a lot of fun that could be had that parents don't want to or don't need to know that their <laughs> kids are having. But, you know, that's what it is. But you learn a lot. You, 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 you know, and you can be more, you know, I mean, Charlotte doesn't ride competitive, goes pro. Rides for U.S. the U.S. ski and snowboard team. That's great. She could be an instructor at Woodward. She could, you know, be a like you said, a social media manager or 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 the media, the actual media person, you know, who's sending out all the the um press releases and answering dumb questions from me, and <laughs> because I have some dumb ones, believe me, I'm still <laughs> learning. Okay, everybody, Jeez Um, but seriously, like kidding aside, there's so much that comes the ski industry has so much to learn and that's great that she wants to stay in it and keep going even if not a pro rider yeah. which is fine too do what do what you want but stay into it. it's going to be a lot of fun she's gonna have a lot of fun up here i don't know exactly what's uh, what's uh what goes on in academy riding anymore i it's been a long time this is how long it's been since i've known a ski school kid um kelly clark and i didn't even know her that well but that's the last one I knew that I could talk to and say by name, hey, how's it going? And, you know, I'm not going to say I know the woman. I don't. She wouldn't remember me if I tripped over her. I probably in a regular day wouldn't know her if I tripped over her. Um, but there was, it was, she was an acquaintance of all of ours because we all worked in the industry and it was a lot yeah. of fun through high school in our 20s. It was a lot of fun. Um, so there's just a lot going on there and she's going to have a great time, you know, and in the academy and, I, you know, I, I'm going to sneak over there probably, you know, when you all are. But then I, there's other kids that I know who are going in there now, too. So all yeah. kinds of family riding for Tim, even though he doesn't have his own family. <laughs> man, we oh. kicked out a lot of information in an hour, man. Like, that was a yeah. lot. And I like we could go for another three hours, except I'm trying oh, to could, keep. I could keep talking. <laughs> well, the thing is funny. You were bringing up how how Charlotte's a chatterbox. And I was like, I'll take that challenge. I live to talk. Yeah. When we were all at Snowbound, by the end of Saturday, I texted you. One of the reasons I texted you that I was leaving, I'll see you guys next time, is because I couldn't speak anymore. I had no <laughs> voice. Yeah. Two days straight of talking, 
I could oh, yeah. not, and I felt like crap. And it kind of stu- sucks because I was gonna uh, ride your all coattails to get a word in edgewise with uh, Sean White, someone who I've met quickly in the past, but that's when he was a little rock star kid trashing hotel rooms. Uh, yeah. To see him as an older gentleman, well, not older gentleman, but as an adult would have been fun, but I couldn't stand up anymore. And it's yeah. not like I could have talked to the guy anyway. So there you go, everybody. A little bit of a parent's perspective and, and Karen will be back on, I'm sure. Um, you know, I will invite myself on some of her trips when she could, like I do with everybody, Scooter and everybody else. Yeah. I invite myself, the boys over at Highfalutin Ski Bump Podcast. I invite myself on their trips. That's how I skied with them at Cannon. They're like, hey, we're going to Cannon. I'm like, I'll meet you there. Oh, we love Cannon. Oh, I Another love Indy, Cannon. We, we introduced, we got introduced to them with um, Indy Pass. So <laughs> that's how I got there. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. what the one question I didn't get to ask, but I'm pretty sure it's the one that, um, I always say get the past you can abuse um the most for that so it's the best bang for your buck. So even if you shell out a thousand dollars, if you ski a hundred days, you get ten dollars a day. Um yeah. I know you ride multiple passes. I'm doing multiple passes this year, Indian Epic for me. Shout out to Epic Pass and the Vermont I mean the New Hampshire Epics. I'm gonna be working with them this year um as a partner. So you'll see me uh, all over those places. Um, and I'm going to be popping up in some crazy places, dude. It's going to be amazing. It's going to feed my narcissism like nothing else has <laughs> fed it yet. And I love that. Um, uh, but the, the, the point is get the pass. That's still got to be the same thing, even for the kids and the family, get the one you can abuse, get the one that makes the most sense to you that you live, you know, that, you know, you'll use. So yes, we started that's a better with, way to put it. <laughs> we started with, um, indie. Then we went mm-hmm. to, we added Epic. And now we added Icon this year. And Whoa. last year, we also did the Ice Ski New York Gold Pass, which cool. I did again this year. Um, and so, yeah, we're, we start off last season without only one Icon. But with all the other passes, we started off the season four thousand about $4,000 in season passes. And hmm. we would have spent 14900 and something. So we save ten thousand dollars. I have a spreadsheet and I break it up by pass and I have all the math done oh, yeah. for me. So I just keep adding it. So with that, again, we don't do a lot over the summer. This is our travel. This is our sport. This is where all our recreation, if you can even say slush fund, because we just keep we, you know, we we work mm-hmm. for it, um, goes. So those are mm-hmm. the important things. But um when you're a kid, the other thing is to look into I, um, I ski New York. If you're a third and fourth grader, it's a very small fee. I want to say 45 or less. Um, you get two days at Perfect. the New York State Mountains. Um, I ski Vermont does something like that. New Hampshire does something. Um, there's mountains out west that do it. Look into your area or where you're going. And a lot of them you don't need to be residents of. You just have to pay for the pass. So you do not need to live in New York to do the I ski, I ski New York. For there kids. you go. Um, so that's, it. and we did all of that too, when they were younger, we looked at deals, um, Epic. I think if you're under five, you call them up, it's a cheaper pass. If they're under five, I think it's a $50 pass or something like that. There is budget ways. Um, the local ski mountains, the ski, like ski stores, like if you buy skis or rentals for the season, they'll give you a package of passes. Um, we're, Potter Brothers in Kingston and Fishkill, New York, sponsored Charlotte this season. Um, Mm -hmm. They're awesome to work with. They sell Jimney Peak and Killington and another mountain ticket um, at a reduced fee for certain days. So I've been going to them even before this to get my Jimney Peak tickets for certain Sundays that I would go and save, you know, $50, $60 a ticket, even for the adults. So there are a lot of discounted ways to do the sport, too. You don't have to nice. go all in and be a crazy snowboard mom like I am. <laughs> um, you can do it more relaxed and, you know, and budget friendly. And like I mentioned, a lot, if you live near a mountain, a lot of them do the ski clubs for kids that are, you know, that are reduced mm-hmm. fee. Um, you know, we have Thunder Ridge is our closest mountain, like I was mentioning before. Um, mm. They do all the recreation departments have ski lessons for the different towns. And sometimes, okay. you know, they'll come by in this town and this town, but you can, you're going for a much more reduced price for a six week lesson. 
Um, you can do the, the lift tickets, rentals, and a lesson right up the mountain for six weeks through the record, you know, department. Awesome. So there are, and that's how, you know, I start, I mean, that's how I started. So it's not a bad, you know, there are cheaper ways to get the family slowly, you know, involved. Absolutely. And the best part about the cheaper ways is if everybody hates it, you're not out as much. Um, I've always said, um, I tell the story about how I found out about Killington Pico's Vermont, New Hampshire days. If you're a resident, you get a ticket for 45 bucks on Monday, Thursday and Friday, maybe I forget what it is. Um, off my hand but i found that out because i was on killington's or no pico's homepage it was the first time i went to pico and i scrolled to the bottom and that's where all the deals are scroll to the bottom and find yes. it do your yep. research um plenty of places to research and don't ever let anybody tell you you know something isn't the right way or something's not real if you're if you have a local rope toe hill that's five bucks for the evening that's cool get it I'll go with you. I don't care. I've been to big places, not as many as them. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. It's funny when Karen says we did 26 in a season. I was like, gee, I think I've done 26 a lifetime. Damn. But yeah. hey, I've been to Ober Gatlinburg and I don't know anybody else. Well, no, that's a lie. I know one other person who's been there. So, but go- well, that's the thing like Google. So if you have questions, yeah. I mean, Google's my best friend. And it's like, you know, yeah. I will say, like, where, do- where can kids ski free? And other people have done the research. I've done the research on my own website, you know, and we'll list those sites and those deals. Um, You know, I know when this comes out, but like Black Friday, there's still some some sales going on that you can get reduced, um, you know, tickets for the future. So doing a lot of that, um, you know, we were you were mentioned it. And then I know like our time is we could talk for another hour. I always say (laughs) too, rentals aren't a bad, you know, rentals aren't a bad thing. If you're getting into it, um, Mm -hmm. get them early, get reserve and get fitted in August, if not earlier, as soon as you know, they're going to start fitting you because they will, um, you know, they will sell out quickly, but you get the better stuff the earlier you go. And a lot of the times too, like I said, they'll come with free tickets or for the kids, Mm -hmm. it's with an adult kid rides free. Um, so mm-hmm. that's a great way and it saves money. And if you don't like it, and also I say like if it breaks or you need to, ch- you know, change it, they're responsible. It's not your money. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and that's one of the things like we have actually always owned, but my kids are 15 months apart. So sure. everything was handed down real quickly. So Perfect. we bought gender neutral colors and <laughs> Their first snowboard, like they just, you know, they shared. And then we went to ski swaps too. And the first, the second board we ever found was a brand new Burton Toy Story board. So my son was like, that's mine. And we (laughs) paid 40 bucks for it. We got him boots for 10. And those boots went down. I think his, his first snowboard jacket at three is, or at four is still being worn nine years later. Like if we just keep passing it down because, and we do, we do buy quality um, Mm -hmm. and then we hand it down, but I'd rather buy that, you know, once and then keep, you know, and when we've traded with friends, I'm all about hand-me-downs, you know, having some cool stuff, but like our base layers, when my son, you know, outgrows them, my daughter gets them, but we order, we get black. So it doesn't matter, you know, who's wearing them Um, and they're base layers. But, um, you know, so that's one of the things there's little things. And even when they were little, like helmet is the most Mm. important thing. Do not buy used. Do get your kids fitted properly. Um, get the helmet, the other stuff you can work and save up for. You can start with, you know, different pants and then go to the Gore-Tex as they get, you know, older and more into it and the more they're going, but there's, you know, start with rentals. And a helmet. Those are the two biggest, you know, do that. And then you piece together what gloves you like. And what works for me also may not work for you. I like this glove. My son likes this brand. My husband likes the old school work gloves. So we're all over the place. So, you know, (laughs) you can get recommendations, but a lot is, you know, getting used to it, trying it out and seeing what, you know, what's best for you. Absolutely. And, you know, having the rental and the lease deals, you're right, man. A lot of those deals also come with, 
you know, uh, tuning throughout the season, repairs. There are those even that have storage. I've seen that not often. That's not something I've seen often, but I have seen it. Um, so if that's what you're into, go for it, man. Let the kids learn. Hand me downs are a beautiful thing. You're right, though. Safety equipment, you know, take care of that because that's yeah. it. if someone's already cracked their skull off with a helmet, it's it's no good anymore. Get rid of it. Yep. Um, yep. And, uh, you know, that's so safety equipment. But hand me downs, man, no worries. And I'll say one more mom hack with the organization that I do use when we travel. And if we're at the same mountain two days in a row, what we also Mm. I'm good with, and we own our equipment now, so it's a little bit different, but we will leave it at the mountain for tuning and waxing overnight. So Mm -hmm. I do not have to put it in the car and lug it back to the hotel room or bring it home. And then the morning I go and pick it up and my, our boarder and all our boards are already at the shop ready to go. Perfect. So it's kind of like the ski valet and it's a lot of times I find the same amount of money to check your, you know, to do their storage, but at least mm-hmm. they're being tuned. Yeah. Uh, to see the ski valet, man, I'm, I'm going to say it like I've, I've been saying it. If, if you have the means you have yeah. the money, it's very expensive. Go ahead and join the Hermitage club down there in the South of Vermont. It's private. It's country club. It's expensive, but Lord knows 90% of what she said, they're going to do it for you yeah. <laughs> and, and and they're going to do it while you're in the spa getting your massage and the kids are watching a movie in the theater and it's wonderful. Um, but that's not for everybody. Karen is street yeah. level and she told you street level and she'll be back on the program. I'm sure she'll show up on Ski Rex Media, social media. Um, I'm sure Charlotte will as well. Yellow Vest Man. Um, yeah. You know, she <laughs> loves it. Eventually, that's probably going to get handed down to her because she's embraced it more than anybody. <laughs> Although I did get me recognized at Snowbound. So I'm pretty happy about that. Yeah. But yes. it's a whole to do and it's very cool. Um, Karen, thank you very much. You got any plugs you want? Your website, the kids' social medias. I know I'm a, I follow pretty much all of them myself. But. Yeah, you can follow us on at K P R O C M O M, K Proc Mom. Um, and then we have Slope Families that's slowly rolling out S L O P E Families on Instagram and Facebook and a website, which is basically family travel, kid travel and reviews of the different mountains we have gone to. And there's probably a lot of them reviews because they have been to a lot. I'm personally going to work on catching up with that this year, because again, ski Rex media has joined the Epic pass, which will get me the three in New Hampshire. I haven't been to. And the two in Vermont, I haven't been to grew up in Vermont, never been to stone, never been to Okemo driven past them both, never been to either one. So that's going to be a lot of fun, but I have been to Hunter in New York and I do enjoy that place. Um, for those who are wondering, um, it's the only place in New York I've skied, I think, which is sad. <laughs> going to whiteface this year though so there you go everybody on yes that's i haven't been to whiteface so we have there you go maybe together well the the goal this year and i was talking to stephanie about this at snowbound because she knows the folks up at titus i was like i'm gonna get both of those in one shot plus i think there's a five dollar rope tow joint in saranac lake i think if i can hit all three of them in one shot boom done three hours right near the Canadian border. The Canadian invasion for me probably isn't happening this year, which is sad because I have two. And I think you also have two tickets to Treblant that are now burning a hole in my pocket. Holy geez. I got to get something. I got to, I got to go to get my passport like tomorrow. It's it's got to be done. Us too. We're the same. (laughs) Yep. So, and Treblant, I know we're talking about kids. I know we're talking about families. I know we're talking about moms and dads. Screw it. They have a lift served casino, and that's what I'm worried about. Right? Yes. Right. Yes. Thank you, Miss Karen. This was awesome. Uh, yes. Good to see you again and talk to you again, as always. Always a lot of fun. Um, I like making friends out on the road and skiing. I can do that, and we're all media friends and not just media friends, just other friends. So cool. Yeah, I'm going to let you go have your evening. I'm going to go have mine, and uh, we'll see you out there this week. This winter, all right. man. Bye, everyone. Thank you. And there she goes. Mom and friend of Ski Rex Media, Karen Proctor, K-Proc Mom. You can find all links to Karen's work uh, in the show notes, just like always. All links in the description. As you know, please, as I always say, do not check that out until you have pulled over. If you're listening in the car or wait until you've gotten to your destination, right? Right. Thank you for joining me for that one. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please let me know. You know how to do that. Links are in the description. 
Or if you don't want to look at the description, you can go to skirexmedia.com. There you can find the email link, which is contact at skirexmedia.com. You can use the voicemail link and leave me a voicemail. You can go to Instagram. You can go to Facebook. You can go to Twitter and DM me. Skirex Media on all three platforms. You can DM me and tell me what you think or other criticisms or shout outs or anything you want. And that goes for the voicemail link as well. You can use that voicemail link to give me criticisms, comments, concerns, shout outs, shout outs for your friends, shout outs for your friends' birthdays and anniversaries or anything you want. You can check out all of that at skirexmedia.com. Plus, the Skirex Media Merch Shop will be back shortly, not only with wearable merch like many other podcasts have, but for the Poser Chronicles magazine and the Lord's Work book coming out after the new year, you'll be able to pick up both of those. Check those out if you will. More on that to come. And you can also, of course, subscribe to the Ski Rex Media newsletter and you'll get all kinds of information about Ski Rex Media that way as well. And since I brought up social media, don't forget to follow Ski Rex Media on those social media platforms, right? Right. Thank you for listening to the Ski Rex Media podcast. I do hope you enjoyed it. As I said, I will see you out there. My season should have begun by the time you hear this. If not, I'm sure I'll be complaining about that on social media. So again, follow me on social media, subscribe to the podcast on Podbean or your favorite podcasting app, and I will see you out there this season. Indie Pass, Whaleback Pass with the Freedom Pass, and the Epic Pass. You never know where I could pop up. Right? Right. Thank you, everybody, and I will see you out there later. Later.